just uh well, hello youtube sorry about that this is the first time i'm doing a screen recording with the imac and uh i just wanted to go over a couple things here and uh show you guys uh my new presets um you can find these at my website joseph d'agostino photography.com and under the lightroom preset page um i have a five pack uh lightroom presets for sale they are the uh newer XMP file format, so they will work with Lightroom as well as Adobe Photoshop because they get um, installed into your camera raw uh, Lightroom catalog as opposed to, well, Adobe catalog as opposed to uh, your user um, developing presets on Lightroom. So it's really like a, a double, uh, double bang for your buck here because you're going to get your uh, presets for Lightroom as well as... Uh, Adobe Camera Raw, um, and I made them cheap and affordable. Um, basically, I'm gonna uh, you'll be able to install uh, five presets, which I use on a daily basis. Um, uh, again, I, I shoot mostly weddings professionally, but um, as far as you know, someone being in the photography, like most of you are probably, if you're checking out my channel, um, I shoot a lot of photography every day I'm taking pictures and I'm usually using stuff to mimic film so I've developed the presets to mimic very closely to film I shoot a lot of film um, for my own personal use I do shoot film professionally as well when I add it to some of my clients for uh, for wedding work but shooting film can help me develop the film presets a little bit better for Lightroom and that's what I've tried to do. I haven't overdone it. I haven't gone crazy with the coloring and tried to really put a strong edit on it because I think then that takes away from what film would look like. So, you know, when choosing um, the presets, I kind of tried to stay as uh, close to the original um, film stock as possible. I'm sorry if I'm kind of rambling on. I, I do all these videos unscripted. I, I don't sit there and write out what I'm going to talk about. I just kind of go off the top of my head and I kind of fly that way and see what comes out. So I just wanted to do a quick uh, little screen grab movie here and show you some of the presets in action. Um, I have my Lightroom module up here. Uh, these images right now, if you're seeing this heavy vignette, this is with a... Uh, Fujifilm GFX medium format, which a lot of people know I shoot. I have a video in my uh, on my channel as well as my blog. I have some uh, you know some um, blog post about that camera, uh, Fujifilm medium format camera. But what I have here is an adapted Canon 85 millimeter uh, f 1.2 L, and because it was such a bright day on the beach here with my daughter, acting like a a silly girl here. Um, I had an ND filter on it uh, just to cut out some of the light because I didn't want to start running into the electronic shutter, which if you know much about the electronic shutter, it can cause some distortion in in subjects. Um, so here I am at one two thousandth of a second. Um, we are at one uh, f1.2. I know right now it's saying f1.0, but that's just because it's not recording it. Um, 85 millimeters, ISO 125. And we're at the beach, and it is bright and sunny. But uh, you'll see this heavy vignetting. Um, it's a soft vignette, but it's still there. But we could get rid of that, and I'll show you in a second. But what I really wanted to focus on is my preset pack. Like I said, um, real cheap. $9.99, um, you'll get a digital download as soon as you purchase through the website. Through uh, You can use either uh, any kind of credit card, debit card, or PayPal. It gets sent to you directly. Um, it actually shows you a link after you purchase, and you can just download it. Uh, it comes in a zip file. You unzip the file. You'll have the five presets, which you can install, XMP files. And you'll also have a PDF file with uh, descriptions on how to install uh, as well as some helpful tips when using my preset pack. Um, like I said, what I'm going to have here is um, I got four, uh, sorry, five. Um, a Portra 400. I have a Fuji 400H. I have uh, my Light and Airy. And I have a clean black and a faded black. But I'm going to go over those. And like I say, um, I'll throw the preset on real quick and I'll just show you uh, a rundown on some of these things. So here's uh, the Portra 400. 
Um, I click that on there and I know right now it's looking a little dark, but what I'll do is I'll take out that vignetting. And again, you don't have to worry about this on some of your other cameras. You know, if you're shooting uh, some lenses that don't vignette that much, this is just particular for this, but I really wanted to use the GFX because I really wanted to show you the coloring. Now it looks a little dark and, um, and contrasty, which film can be contrasty, but like I suggest, uh, in my preset pack directions, I like to bump the exposure up a little bit on these. So when I bump the exposure up, this is at one, that's a little strong, but I'll bring it up here. I'll bring up some shadows if I want. And again, this is to your liking. I'm just basically throwing the presets up here for you guys to get a general color of each film stock. It's up to you how you want to, you know, adjust it. You want to bring up the highlights, down the highlights, you know, again, it's your call. <coughs> Excuse me. It's going to give you a basic um, parameter for what you're doing, but again, it's up to you. You want to bring down the shadows, you want to bring them up, but uh, let me just throw that preset on there again real quick at where I had it, and this is where it's at. Um, if I want to warm it up just a little bit, I can do that. If I want to take uh, some of the, the red hue out and put some green in there, it, again, you're right back to where you want to be. Um, I didn't um, adjust any of the exposure for the preset. So again, you're going to do that. And as far as uh, color temp as well, I didn't uh, add any kind of correction for color temperature because again, I don't know what you're shooting your pre uh, what you're shooting your images at. I don't know if you're shooting Kelvin, um, if you're shooting, you know, a particular white balance. Uh, that's up to you. Auto white balance. Um, I believe these were auto white balance. But again. Um, Usually for portrait, it's good at 5,600 to 6,000. Uh, here's 5,600. It's got that warm tones. You're going to get that peachy skin um, that you're kind of looking for when you're looking at portrait and, and kind of mimic that um, up around 6. It's a little warm, but it was like, again, it was a really bright sunny day. But um, you bring it back up a little bit. And like, here we go at 50, right around 5,600. Um, I also added... A little bit of sharpening to this, but not sharpening throughout the whole image. What I'll do is I'll throw a mask on it for you. So basically what you're going to see when you have your sharpening is um, you'll get a, uh, let's see this. You're just going to get some of the edges, uh, eyes and, and whatnot sharpening. So that's, uh, I'm not giving you this. I mean, that's, it's, it's overkill and it's, I think it's going to, it's a little bit too strong on the image and, uh, it's not for me, but again, it's up to you. You, you, you can, you know, certainly adjust your image, but I'm getting, I'm giving you a starting point. Um, I also added a, a grain, uh, to it. Now, again, the grain isn't strong. We're at 22 and this is to uh, mimic medium format film, if that's what we're trying to do. Um, not necessarily medium format green. Obviously, you can try to mimic any kind of film stock you would like. But when I shoot weddings or portrait work, predominantly I'm using a medium format 120 film. I'm using portrait. I'm using Fuji. And um, so I did throw in a green structure to mimic what I see when I get my scans back. And you'll see that, you know, throughout the image here, you can kind of check that out. So, uh, that's the Portra 400. I'll give you another example of Portra 400, um, which was a pretty popular image. Let me get here and reset this one for you. Again, uh, a little dark. Uh, I don't really mind that too much. I'm preserving some of the highlights in this image in the background. Uh, this was a wedding. Uh, that we did, and if I throw my preset on, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Portra 400, let that load up, and did that go on? Let me see, reset that, yeah, okay. So, Portra 400, and again, I'm bringing up my exposure on this image to where I want it to go. And I do want to warm this a little bit. I'm all over the place now. Reset this, let's go back. Portrait 400. And bring up my image. 
That's the one I was doing. At least the one I was working on. Bring up my image. <clears throat> and like I said, um, I'll take this and I'll warm it just a little bit. And I want to bring my highlights down. Maybe take it down just a little notch here. Taking it down a notch to preserve, you know, some of the coloring in here. Um, and again, uh, this has a uh, vignette because, again, this was the same lens. If I want to take that vignette out, I can do that, obviously, right here. But now here we go. And again, um, I'm keeping a green structure in there. If you don't want the green, it's absolutely fine. You just... Uh, just remove it and there we go no grain this one's a little soft but uh, no grain but I like it because I'm sometimes like I said I'm adding to film stocks <clears throat> um, another image uh, let's go into uh, let's do a close uh, image here and reset again a little dark this is a raw file from the uh, GFX. Um, let's just say I want to do a Fuji 400H on this. Um, preset has been applied. And again, for these, I'm going to pull this up a little bit. Okay, and I'm actually going to pull the shadows up because I want the shadows in her hair to come up a little bit. Maybe pull down some of the whites in her face. And then the dress to preserve some of that detail. If I blow out the whites, you're not going to see uh, she looks like a it looks like a white blob but pull down some of the the whites here so i can see that detail and again i've already had the sharpness applied to where i like it the film grain has already been added and there's not too much of a vignette but if i want to get rid of any of that vignette i can do that right there and again we're looking like film here and you can see the difference in the colors. Uh, the Fuji 400H has that pastel type of uh, look to it on the greens. Um, you're not getting as peachy of a skin tone, more of a, um, a white, pale skin tone. It looks great with red hair. Um, we can do a light and airy. <coughs> um, excuse me. Um, I'll show you one of those images, but uh, let me go over this next one here because this is a this is a really cool image that I was really happy with. And again, this is with the Portra 400 added. Um, that's with Portra 400 added. But let's try our clean black on this. So let's reset this image. Okay, here's the image reset raw file, and let's go with a clean black. Now my clean black is meant to uh, mimic our recently lost Acros 100 from Fujifilm. Sadly, it is gone, um, but it was a very clean black and white uh, film stock, and um, I did my best to try to mimic it. So here we go. Um, again, a little dark. I'm going to bring up my exposure on this. I might actually add some, some contrast to this one. And I will bring up my shadows a little bit. I'll bring down my highlights just so I can preserve some of the detail on her face. I don't want to go too much. Let's go here. Let me get rid of this vignette. Because if I put in any vignette, it'll be uh, post-crop vignetting down here. Actually, I did leave post-crop vignetting on here. If you take it off, here we are. But I like to put a little bit in, especially with my black and whites. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and we already have some sharpening done. And basically, that's it. I really wanted to kind of do something with her eyes, make them pop a little bit. I can do that. Um, again, I didn't want to make this a whole editing session. I really meant to just uh, do this for showing you the preset overlays, but I can't help it when I have a photo in front of me and I want to do something that's going to get done. Just what I do. I'm sure you guys are the same way. 
So if I want to bring our eyes, let them pop a little bit, I can bring up the exposure. I can bring up some shadows. I don't want to make her vampire eyes by doing this. <laughs> be scary. You know, she's a pretty girl sticking her in the middle of the woods with glowing eyes would kind of freak me out, I think. But uh, I think that would probably just be enough. Let's see what that looks like before and after. Yeah, a little pop on the eyes there. And if we close that out and bring that down, it's still a little strong. A little strong. Let's see what it looks like from a distance. That's where I want to be, right there. Close that. And let's see if I bring that up and down. Yes. Okay. So that would be a clean black. <clears throat> um, very cool. I like it. Um, we can go back to uh, these are some other ones. This is uh, again um, my daughter at the beach again on that uh, crazy day, very sunny day. Uh, reset this image. I actually had the crop angle a little bit different, so I'll do that. Close it. Let me get rid of this vignette for you guys. Um, so I don't throw you off. I'm not going to go crazy on it, but I'll bring it up there. Um, and let's see. We could go clean black. We could go faded black. I don't know if you'll see much fade. Yeah, we could do faded black. Um, light and airy. Um, we didn't talk about light and airy. Uh, I'm going to show you a different Portra 400 and Fuji 400H. I think I had um, Portra 400 on this again. Uh, just to throw the overlay on it real quick, bump up some of the exposure. And again, we're, uh, we're looking kind of film. I can obviously uh, adjust some of the sun, uh, the white balance if I want. But I think we're already at, well, we're at 5100. It's a little cool. But let's get rid of that and let's put in, um, I reset the whole image. I'm not worrying about all that. But I want to show you the, uh, the faded black. Um, faded black is... There's one example of it here. Um, if I get rid of uh, the vignette. Fade of Black is sort of like my take on a Kodak black and white film stock. Uh, not necessarily a Tri-X, uh, maybe a, um, well, maybe a Tri-X. It, what it has is um, it has some subtle softness to it um, as far as the tones. It's going to have more of a, um, a creamier um, faded black. To, um, faded look in the dark shadow areas. Still plenty, plenty uh, contrasty. Um, if I want to bring up the shadows on this and bring her up a little bit, we can do that. Bring down some of the highlights. Bring, uh, I'm going to bring a shadow down a little bit. And the whites. Here you go. Um, I did add a film stock to a uh, film grain to it as well. But you're getting this creamier look as opposed to a clean black, which is going to be like a hard, more of a contrasty. This is, um, this is really great for, um, I want to say this is, and you'll see on the, uh, at the preset pack, this is really good for, uh, like wedding work, uh, anything like I say, like a romantic kind of look, but, uh, uh, let me go to the library and pull up that other wedding. Cause there's a lot of pictures, um, in that wedding. That's, um, really good for this kind of stuff. This is uh Dan and Nicole's wedding and I'm just going to put the five, uh, I got to go through all these. I don't mean to waste your time on the on the YouTube video here, but uh, it's just a good example of when this could be used. Um, and I'm going to go all the way over to some of their formal picks. Um, actually, I can show you one of these. This is a nice one, too. So this was a soft black. Let me let this load up here. This is uh, another GFX image. Um, with the Pentax 105 mounted to the uh, GFX. I like to adapt a lot of lenses, but. So if I show you, um, let's see, let's just use this one here and let me just reset this, develop, reset it and show you the raw file. Okay. Was that a reset? 
previous. Yeah. All right. Reset image. Oh, the coloring's nice on that, just as it is, but that's Fuji for you. But let's go with, um, here's a clean black. Let's go with a faded black. Uh, you'll get this faded black. This shows a pretty good example of it. And what we have here is, you can see the difference. Here's a clean black. You can see all these dark, um, these dark blacks and real, um, it's a smooth, you know, graduation from dark to, to highlights, uh, shadows to highlights, but it is dark and it is white. When we go into a faded black, we're going to get this creamier transition. We're, we're getting some of the, um, both levels are toned down a little bit. And again, you can, you can make that stronger by adding your contrast or whatnot, but right off the bat, wherever you want to set it, I wouldn't overexpose. This is great for like, again, real strong white to black, um, contrasting highlighted images. Um, take some of the highlights off of her face. Maybe I can pump up some of the shadows. If I want to retain some of the detail in the arm area that are in the shadows, which you, you lose with the clean black. I mean, it's going, it's going black, but you get that detail back. It is a film grain added to it as well. Um, you can make your darks darker if you want. Obviously, again, I'm just starting you guys off with a simple preset overlay to get you started, to get your coloring where you might like it. And, um, you know, you go from there. But that's a soft black image. Um, I had a really nice one outside as well that I wanted to show you. Um, this is a cool wedding, all farm um, decor and, and everything out, out on a farm. And, Pennsylvania. These guys did a great job. Um, but where is she? Okay, here we go. Um, another cool image. We can reset this image and we can do a couple things with this one. Let's try it out. So this is a reset image again, uh, Fujifilm GFX with a 105 Pentax on it. We can go clean black. And again, if we go clean black, you can see this really nice uh, highlight in her hair, and it is a smooth, clean image. Um, we can go uh, faded black and give you more of that film stock look. Um, and again, you can see the differences. And, you know, if I go faded black and I want to keep that detail in her dress, I'm just going to bring down my whites a little bit. And, you know, we still have the detail in the dress. Um, we can get rid of all that and we can go Fuji 400H. And if we want to cool this down a little, we can do that. And we can overexpose it a little bit to give you that Fuji look. We can also, again, if we want to bring down the whites to keep that detail in our dress. We can do that. Bring down some highlights if you like. And now we're at a Fuji look, and we get that more pastel green. We can go light and airy. Light and airy will give you definitely a more of a golden tone and more of a peachy tone. And again, if we want to, you know, overexpose it, we can do that. Um, we can cool it down a little bit if we want to. And again, it's giving you that light and airy pastel greens. We're losing a little detail here in our dress. We can bring on the whites, and we can bring on the highlights, and we get it back. Here it is. If we say where it was is up here and we lose it. So we'll bring it back. And there we go. And if we want to do a portrait 400, we can do a portrait 400. And again, maintain some of that peachiness, but it's not going to be as strong as light and airy. And there we go. A little different. Um, I will show you one more image because I know we're running a little long here and, uh, let's go to, let's go to, sorry. Let's go to Q. Nope. Mayberry. All right. Here's another wedding. And, uh, this is, uh, this is Larry. Larry's a good dude. Uh, GFX portrait with the 
Pentax 105 again. Let's reset that image. And this is where we were. Okay. We can throw in a fade of black. Fade of black looks really cool for portraits. Um, definitely indoor hotel room style. This was right in his hotel room with a window light right on the uh, right side. Him sitting on one of the couches that you get in a hotel room. Nothing special about it. Uh, just took my time, manual focus, and made sure that I had some uh, nice exposure for his uh, highlights. I'm not too concerned about the shadows. And there we are. I mean, really, I can kind of call this one a day right where it is. But if I want to preserve some of the detail in his face, I could bring up the shadows. I could bring down the highlights. I could bring up the exposure a little bit if I want. And uh, I would kind of leave it right here. Now, I want to, that's the faded black. Let me put on a clean. Here's a clean black. And we can, again, take down some highlights here. The reason why I say take down highlights is because when I threw the preset on, clean black. Here we are. You, you, we have detail. We definitely have detail here. But I, I like to take the highlights down on black and whites. Sometimes, not all the time. When I'm doing some, like street photography and whatnot, I like that contrast, that hard look. But when I'm shooting um, portraits or, or people, rather, and I, I don't want to blow out their skin and not see the detail in their skin. So if I'm all the way up here, it's it just it's way too much, it, it, my opinion. Again, your look is your look, but for me, it's, it's too strong. I'll take down my highlights. I'll get that. I want to see this in his face. I want to see his, you know, his character on his face. And, you know, I don't want to lose things on his skin, the wrinkles, the eyebrows. Like, you know, I want to create definition. If, if I do this highlight, I'm getting dark and white, dark and white. I get, get nothing in between. So I'm going to bring down that. I'm going to bring down those highlights. Sometimes if it's too strong, I could bring down the whites as well, but I don't need to bring down the whites here. Actually, I might even bring them up a little bit just to keep the contrast. But what I want to see is I want to see the skin. I want to see the definition on the skin, and, and there we go. We have it. Um, this is the clean black. Again, if I want to make the blacks a little darker, which I like, I can do that. And there we are. That's Larry on a clean black. Um, if I want to make this something different and I want to throw um, a Fuji or a Light Nair, he's a little strong for indoors. Let's do a Portra 400. Um, I want to cool this off a little bit here. Keep his skin tone. I don't want him to be looking like, uh, you know, he did a fake and bake and he's in the, in the sun too long. But right about there is good. Um, really don't have to do much else. Nope. I like the highlights. That's too strong. And I bring them down. Right there. I'm done. I'm not touching it. Over. Perfect. For me. Again, you're different. Do what you want to do. It's your image. But for me, that's where I like to keep it. And uh, let me see right here. And, and this is with green too, okay? This is with the film medium format, you know, mimicking green. If I don't want the green, I'll take that out. Gone. Green is gone. And there's the image. Okay. Either way. So again, guys, that's just, oh, here's a really good one with the light and airy. I'm sorry. Um, that's what I wanted, to, I wanted to show you. Um, I think it is a, it's a wide, or we could do the panorama. Either one. Let's go with the wide. All right, reset that. Here's the stock photo. Okay. Um, this is with a Nikon D5, uh, 85 millimeter, 1.4, and I am at one one thousandth of a second, ISO 250 at 1.8. Uh, so this is a Nikon image, and again, you know, great sharpness, coloring, um, you know, probably most people, you know, I'm not saying that they wouldn't be happy with 
just this right here and, and it's fine. But for me, I want to mimic that film look. So I'm going to throw a light and airy on this. Here we go. Really, I'm kind of happy right there. I'm getting that pastel green, that light and airy look that I'm trying to achieve when I'm, and I'm shooting this kind of stock uh, that's really popular with wedding photography. I'm getting this nice pastel green haze in the background on my leaf, uh, on my leaves here with the trees. And what I'm getting is I'm getting the skin tones where I like them to mimic somewhat of a film with that peachy skin tone that's really popular with, uh, with film stocks. Really, I'm kind of done with this right here. Um, I can bring the highlights down, but the highlights to me kind of start darkening the image. I kind of liked them where they were, so I'll just go back and I'll punch that back up. Um, I don't really need to do anything with exposure. It's a little, it's too much. That's too dark. Again, I like to, to bump these a little bit. Uh, coloring is right where I'd leave it. And uh, that one's done for me. I don't want to put a vignette on it. No, I don't like that because then when I put the vignette on it, I'm losing, I'm losing that look that I was originally trying to do. If you look here, here we go. Oh, it's better without it. Take that off. And that's it. So that's light and airy. Again, you, you could throw a faded black on here if you want to. Um, you want to do a nice clean black and white image. That's fine. Take some of this vignette out if you want to, and uh, you know maybe pump it up a little bit. Take the shadows up. So you again shadows sometimes with black and whites. I want to see the detail in his jacket, and I want to see the detail in her dress. So it's tough when you have a pretty much a black subject next to a white subject. It's like you have to expose for one or the other. And really, I would like to expose for the dress because let's face it. The bride is what's important on the wedding day. Uh, she's going to be picking about the images, and you want to see the detail in her dress. A black suit is a black suit. A white dress, especially a wedding dress, always usually has some detail to it. And hers had some beautiful detail, so I wanted to keep that. And there we go for a, uh, uh, this is the clean black. If I want to add some contrast to this image, I can to make it more, maybe a little, Clarity, maybe darken my blacks. I like the blacks where they are. I actually want to bring them up so I can see his his detail. And that's it. I can throw a vignette on this. Might look good with a vignette. Yeah, I kind of like it. I'll take my highlights out of that. And there we go. So that's that's basically what you'll get for. You're $9.99. It's pretty powerful. It's not that expensive. I'm giving you, again, the clean black, the faded black, Fuji 400H, a light and airy, and a Portra 400 on my preset pack. They can be found if we just go to my website, um, Joseph D'Agostino Photography. And if this is where you'll get when you get there, um, about me, my work, um, and if we go over here to Lightroom Presets, right here, Joe D'Agostino 5-Pack Lightroom Preset Collection, $9.99. Um, it gives you a description of what we're getting, and it actually shows you some of those edits that we just looked at today. Um, before and afters of each film stock. Um, this wedding I shot, uh, I'm sorry, this engagement I shot a lot of film at, so my my film is really close to what my presets end up achieving afterwards. So I was pretty happy about how accurate they were on that. Um, again, what we're showing you here is some of the, uh, this is the image that we just looked at. Here's some clean black images and some fade of black. So again, good description right after that. You just hit it to the cart, it's in your items, and you check out. Once you check out, right on this next page after you check out, you'll actually get a, uh, a download code. You'll also get one to your, uh, to your email that you end up putting in right here. And uh, once you do that, 
and you can just uh, upload them and like I said the instructions will be in there um, another thing make sure to check out my blog um, on my website a lot of cool images there that you can uh, that you can check out and see um, a lot of cool topics uh, that we have on the right side here a lot of cool things um, just different work and different things that I'm talking about you know some reviews some camera reviews uh, if you need to contact me, you can always just contact me right at the end. And as always, please check out my Instagram page and give me a like and a follow. And um, there's always something going on here every day. I'm always putting up, uh, always putting up new images every day and talking about new things. And uh, you know, we can go right from there. And uh, you can contact me on here as well. Usually, it's a little tougher, but send me an email, and uh, we'll get you all set up. Thanks, guys. Thanks for checking out the, uh, the preset pack, and I really uh, appreciate it. Have a good one.